Well, I, I thought we took a step in the right direction today, and uh, you know, really excited about how we defended, especially in the second half, and uh, holding them to 22 points, and did a really good job at that end of the floor. And uh, happy with our bench. The, I thought they, you know, have a lot. There's a lot of things that they did that don't even show up, you know, on a stat sheet. You know, I think we had uh, 18 out of 22 assisted baskets. So on offense, that's what we're you know striving for, and uh, we've been pretty good at that. And when we played well, so happy to see the uh, sharing of the basketball. I thought we were we were rotating well, you know, closing out well. Uh, you know, it was definitely something we discussed at halftime. Uh, you know, and, and, and you know, the one we left Pope on under out of bounds, everyone kind of went to the cutter, and you know, he shot one right in front of our bench with no one around. So we just had to do a better job of contesting those, and I thought we did that in the second half. It seemed like you guys also did a better job of driving to, to the basket, making them foul you, as opposed to just shooting threes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I thought you know we we had good balance, uh, you know, between uh, you know getting to the free throw line is huge if we can, and we were able to do that, and I'm excited about that. There were a couple of key stretches there in the second half where Alonzo Gaffney was playing center, uh, primary rim protector. Can you talk about maybe the trust level you have in him to play, you know, center without Warren or Duke out there? For this type of team, this opponent, it, it made sense because they, they're both of their, their bigs. When they went to Rata and uh, Bilodeau, you know, they, they could both make threes. So it, it, it made sense for, from a matchup standpoint to go that direction. This is the best Alonzo Gaffney has looked in weeks. So I'm uh, really happy and he's, he's, he's had a good couple of days of practice. And, uh, you know, he looks, uh, has a renewed kind of energy about him, and he, he defended very well. And, and he's kind of what I was focusing on when I was telling you, like a lot of what he brought won't show up in a box score, but it's him being able to switch and move his feet against guards and uh, the way he played defense, especially in the second half, was really good. So you're 11-0 and 0 when Gavin has double figures. He doesn't suck up a lot of shots. He's talked about just like what he does off the ball and transition. So how important is it when as a barometer for you offensively. Yeah, he's uh, he was a live wire tonight. You know, he's just going to the offensive board. Uh, you know, he's getting in passing lanes. He was uh, he was communicating well. You know, on defense with the switches when we needed to. Um, so he he brought the appropriate leadership to the team uh, and, and experience when when you're struggling a little bit, you're going through a tough time. Uh, I, I thought he he brought the right energy to the game and. Uh, and um, did all those little things that we need him to do, and uh, so that was uh, it. Was great for him to, to see him play that way tonight. You talked earlier about getting off to a good start, and obviously you're trailing at the half, but you basically did do a lot of good things early to get off that start. Yeah, I mean, some of it, like I touched on, was was you know we left Pope open for three. I, you know, maybe we had a few other examples of, of breakdowns, but I, you got to give credit to Oregon State, and I'm. Uh, what, what Wayne has done with, with a young team, and he's got you know, some really good young players to, to build around in the future. And I mean, a kid Billado was going against Warren. It looks like he looked like freaking Dirk Nowitzki, and you know, on the one shot, like one leg, step back, contested, you know. And they made a few shots late at the buzzer too. That's their style, and and those are demoralizing when you guard for 25, 27 seconds, and then someone hits one as the clock's winding down. So we we had to fight through some of that in the first half, but I, I liked overall where we stood. I wasn't, no one was really in panic mode. Does this brighten the, the, the mood of the guys and just everything? Just kind of just See, I don't think really, uh, no, no, nothing against anybody in this room or anywhere else, but like unless you played at, at, at our level and, and experienced what it feels like to go through a tough stretch and, and lose a few games, no matter what you say and do in practice or, or what the players do in practice, there, there is inherently a, a, a loss of confidence. And, and tonight was, uh, I guess, a reintroduction to winning and, and knowing how to win and close an opponent out. So I'm hoping that there's, there's going to be a uh, carryover effect now that we could all breathe and and uh, because I've been through it as a player, and I know you, I know it as a coach and a player. Like you lose these games, some heartbreaking, some not. You lose four in a row. You feel like, are we ever going to win a game again? No matter how good a season you've had. So, um, 
happy the guys feel good for them because they've had a great season that they they could uh, get this out of their system and get back on the winner track. Thank you guys.